Hey guys, it's Ross from Flatpak FX here, and in this video, I'm gonna be doing another video breakdown from the perspective of an After Effects user. Now, I got a lot of requests for more video breakdowns, so in this video, we're gonna be breaking down a video called Slovenia, by another really talented filmmaker called Eric Hedenfolk. Now I've linked to this video in the description below, so if you haven't watched this video already, I highly recommend going and checking that out. And also take the time to check out Eric's channel because he's a really underrated filmmaker and he deserves a lot more attention. So let's dive straight in. Now the first thing we see in this video is a reflection shot, and we can simply do that by just using the mirror effect inside of After Effects. Now the next thing I notice a lot in this video is the use of a lot of fast transitions. And we've seen a lot of this sort of stuff done in Ben TK and also in Calder's videos. So in particular with this shot, you can see that he's probably used a series of masks to mask out the edge of the curtain. Or here where you can see it's eaten into the edge of the curtain, he's probably used like an alpha transition or some sort of alpha mat to reveal and then layer his new background behind that. Now one question I do get a lot is, do these sort of things impress me? And the answer to that is yes and no. The technical ability it takes to actually achieve a lot of these effects is quite basic and straightforward. Like a lot of this stuff I could show you how to do and most of you would be able to follow along. The thing that really impresses me and what separates these guys from the rest of us is their ability to actually think in that mindset. So what I mean by that is to actually have the ability to take a series of shots and actually work out how you're going to tie them all together. So to actually come up with the effects in the first place. Now this can go all the way back to when they actually film this stuff because they're always trying to think of ways to make the camera move more fluidly through the shots by using something like a Ronin or something like that where they've got a gimbal to stabilize the camera. And they're also trying to move it behind things and trying to get really unique shots. Now that stuff is not stuff that you can necessarily be taught. It's stuff that you've got to kind of get yourself into that mindset. And it just comes from experience of experimenting and trying to do a lot of these different techniques. So that stuff in particular is really, really impressive. It's their storytelling ability of basically taking all these shots and turning it into a story that sort of guides the viewer through their videos. Now that stuff is really, really impressive and Eric definitely deserves a lot more attention than he's getting. So in particular here, we've got this shot that goes backwards through these doors. So to get this sort of thing, there's a few ways we could go about it. The first one could be actually just walking backwards from each of the doors. And then what he's actually done is he's overlaid each of the doors over the top of each other. And then he's basically cut out the door and used like a little 3D sort of um, movement to actually open and close the door in the shot. And then layering these all together, he's created that seamless transition. And the other thing I've picked up here is on this particular shot, you can see that we've got this sort of this fading effect. And if you see right on the edges here, he's actually using one of these alpha overlays of an ink drop or some sort of water drop that he's using to actually create this mask. Now, I've actually got a tutorial showing you exactly how to do this, and I've linked to that in the description below. So again, in particular here, we've got another shot with this ink transition, and you can actually really see the ink drops really, really clearly in this thing. Now, this sort of transition, is actually using an alpha overlay sort of video of these ink maps. And if you check out that video in the description below, you'll see exactly what these actually look like. Now, when you overlay them over the top of your video and you set the track mat to actually be that particular layer, you'll get that sort of transitioning. Now, what's really impressive here is that he's actually thinking about layering these different video shots. So we've got this background shot of this town of where we actually start. Then he's got a second shot here, which he's actually transitioning into, which is this shot of this bridge here and the stream. And then he's basically using his track mat or his alpha mat of the ink drops to actually create that reveal. Then he's actually got a third layer here, which is actually part of this first shot here of him standing on this wall. And he's actually masked that to create a third sort of separated layer, which continues through to the end of that transition. So it's really, really impressive again of that mindset of actually how you're going to break that all down. It's really, really impressive and he deserves a lot of credit. Now, another really impressive series of shots that he's got here is where he's combining time lapses 
with real time video. Now you can see in particular in this shot, he's got a time lapse actually happening in the background of all the clouds and the foreground seems to be moving in real time. So it's not a time lapse. Now the only way you can do this is by actually using a series of masks. So the background would have to be one time lapse shot. And then he's also videoed himself standing on this rock in the foreground in real time. And then what he's done is just created basically a mask that runs around the outside. And then he's created basically a 3D camera move that runs over the top to get that sort of transition of the camera going back through the scene. Now, another really good thing to know here when you're doing this sort of stuff is that he's actually shot these two exactly in the same position. So by that, I mean that he hasn't taken a foreground element from somewhere else and then tried to stick it over the back. These two are actually part of the same scene, but he shot them using two different shots. So he would have stood outside this shot and then shot the time lapse. Then he would have actually stepped in and filmed himself on the rock to get those two different layers. Now, the big advantage of doing it this way is that when he's actually put a mask around himself and through the scene, it blends a lot better into the background because the background and the colors and the tones all match exactly to his foreground. So if you tried to do this where you had a different foreground that you shot somewhere else, and then you try to put it over a different background, the lighting's gonna be different. And you're also going to see a lot more of those masks. So this way it just looks a lot more seamless. And that combined with that 3D sort of camera move backwards, just makes it a really, really good shot. Now again, in particular, we've got another shot here where he's transitioned beautifully between these two shots. So we've got one shot, which is a drone shot from above, where he's actually, you can see they're on this little rope sort of bridge here. And that is what he's actually filming here. We've got like a bridge, which is over the top of this river. And then what he's done is he's put an alpha transition over to this second shot of the car driving down the road. Now the impressive thing here is he's actually created a mask on the road and he's layered that over the top of this first video here and he's transitioning between those two shots. Now the thing I'm most impressed with here is the fact that he's using two shots and carrying elements right through the transition. So in particular, he's using this road from the very first shot and then it's transitioning to that finished frame. And we saw this exact same technique done in the earlier part of the video where it was transitioning out and he had masked himself out on the wall. Now, normally if he just created a, a straight transition of two shots, the effect just wouldn't be anywhere near as impactful as actually carrying elements across the scenes. So that's the sort of stuff again that I keep coming back to, which is about the mindset of how you're actually gonna transition these things across. Now, another shot in particular here is the movement of the camera. Now, I'm actually gonna go back a few frames here because here what is really impressive is the fact that he's actually kept the camera transitioning all the way through. So he's actually started the camera moving right from the get-go, which is on this shot here, and then it quickly sort of pans and transitions. And what it allows is when it actually transitions over this wood in the foreground, it creates just a seamless transition from start to finish. You're expecting the camera to keep moving rather than just being from one shot to the next. It just creates this really fluid movement. Now again, when filming, he would have filmed something with his camera looking down here that actually runs over the edge of a rail or something like that, a wood rail. And then he's created a mask which actually goes along the edge here and then it transitions nicely into another shot where he's boarded up behind another layer or something in the foreground that's going to create a really nice transition from one shot to the other. So here we've got a transition between these two shots. So you can see this is actually the original which is in the second frame here. So he's standing on this bridge or a railway sort of crossing here and it's overlooking the forest and the mist. And you can see what he's actually done here is he's masked himself out and he's transitioned from a different shot here which transitions into the original. And he's also used a white transition here to transition more clearly. You can see you've got a bit of an edge feather as he's masked himself out here. And he's also using these RGB elements. So he's got a RGB element that's affecting the edge of the thing. And he's created like a lens distortion. So there is a feature in After Effects where you can create that lens distort. 
And then he's added that RGB over the top just to make it look like it's an actual in-camera transition. And it's done really, really well. It's very seamless. So here you can see he's got another really impressive hyperlapse. The hyperlapse has really impressed me the most, to be honest, because I know how time consuming they are to create. And a lot of them, I've, I've seen a lot of hyperlapses that just don't turn out very well. So it's also having that mindset of what is actually gonna look really impressive with your hyperlapse rather than just doing a standard hyperlapse. Now here's also another really impressive shot where there's a lot of things going on. So we've got this snow or dust effect that's actually on the foreground. We've got a shot here of him running through this town. And then the sky is actually transitioning all in one complete shot. I would say that when he actually shot this, the sky was lighter than it actually is. You can see here, there is a little bit of a mask edge that's coming through where you can see the lighter sky. And then he's actually put either a time-lapse of a moon or something moving through the night sky here. And he's also exaggerated this by possibly putting a lens flare over the top. Now I can't actually tell whether these snow elements or these dust elements are real. Probably, if I had to guess, I would say that they probably have been added later in post because they carry through to the two different shots here. And you can see here, we've also got a digital lens flare that's also been added. And then it transitions straight to white to then the flash of the camera. And again, thinking through the story, we're carrying these elements of this dust or the snow particles through to the next shot, which is really, really clever and impressive. And overall just creates a really seamless and really impressive transition. So there you go, guys. There's a breakdown of Eric's video. I've linked to his channel and that video in the description below, and I highly recommend going and checking out his channel because he is an underrated filmmaker that deserves a lot more attention. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more videos over at flatpackeffects.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.